Hi everyone and welcome to the Yellowfin webinar about dashboard best practices. My name is Emma Early and I've also got Rob Eldridge with me. We're both solution consultants at Yellowfin. Now what we're here today to talk to you about is what we believe are the best practices for when you're creating dashboards. So I'm not going to take you through these in detail at the moment. I'm actually going to hand you over to Rob and he's going to walk you through what we think are our top 10 tips for this focus. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Emma. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, as Emma discussed, we're going through the top 10 best practices for dashboard design. Um, and the objective is to create engaging dashboards that your users want to uh, use. So firstly, why dashboards? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, all of us on the call know that uh, we consume information better if it's visual. So it's a lot easier to communicate uh, visual information uh, on how your business is performing using a dashboard rather than tabular reports. So let's get into it. Number one, purpose. So you want to make sure you design each tab in your dashboard for a specific purpose. Now the purpose can be uh, the particular role the dashboard is designed for, and this could be uh, the level in the organization. Maybe you've got executive levels rather than um, operations uh, uh, level dashboard. It could also be industry. So you might have a healthcare dashboard that's uh, you know targeted at you know patient care rather than um, supply chain. So both industry as, as well as uh, levels within the organization. Number two, functionality. So you want to make sure your dashboard is designed to suit your use case. So generally, there are three types of dashboards, uh, strategic dashboards, analytical dashboards, and operational dashboards. So the main difference between the three of them is the decision horizon. Typically, strategic dashboards are designed for long-term uh, decisions. So they could be a, a global sales manager looking at territories across the uh, the world to determine where to invest or where to start a new sales organization, for instance. Analytical dashboards are more about exploring your data. So they're very interactive to let you slice and dice uh, to explore the data to determine um, your particular objective. This could be uh, like a marketing dashboard, for instance, when you want to um, determine spend uh, for, for, for ads or engagement for, for a particular ad. And finally, we've got operational dashboards. And these dashboards are your classic, I guess, contact center dashboard where you're monitoring a team and you want to see how agents are performing on a particular um, campaign, for instance. So three general categories of dashboard. Number three, summarize. So you want to provide a summarized view of your dashboard. So you don't want to overwhelm the user with you know, multiple analytics on one screen. You want to make it summarized and easy for them to consume. So don't overwhelm the user. So this is an example of a KPI type dashboard. So you've got very clear uh, metrics on the top there. Um, you've also got some uh, target information as well as a bit of a spark line showing you how you performed. We've got some context by showing some um, dimensions there that you know, help to give some context to the actual uh, metrics we're displaying on the dashboard. And down at the bottom there, you've got some performance management sort of KPI type functionality to show how uh, your performance is trending across multiple categories. Okay, so um, don't overwhelm the user, um, summarize the data to make it easier to consume. Number four, relevance. So the design is gonna be relevant to the audience. Typically, there's two types of uh, relevance or two types of ways to make it relevant to your audience. One is to make it actionable. So any metrics or insights you provide need to be able to be used in a business context to actually uh, make business, business decisions. There's no point in providing information where it can't be utilized or operationalized within the business to actually um, affect change in the business. Secondly, it's got to be contextual. So this is all about measuring the right things in the organization. So it's got to be aligned to your business goals. So if you've got some sort of performance management framework, you've got to make sure the metrics you're uh, displaying in your dashboard um, are aligned with the goals of the organization. Number five, visual fit. Um, I'm not going to go through all these uh, chart types, but the general uh, point I'm trying to make here is you want to use the right chart 
for the type of message you're trying to convey, and the type of data uh, that's going to be on your dashboard. So for comparisons, use bar or column charts, for instance, and for something like more sort of statistical data, maybe use a box and whisker. For um, location data, use a map. Okay, uh, and this I think is you know makes sense. So sorry, Rob, can I just interrupt? Do you like the use of three D charts? <laughs> uh, typically, we don't recommend three D charts uh, ever because it's not. Okay. It's, <laughs> um, they look great, but they're a little bit um, hard to consume. There's just too much information on the flat flat charts. All are better. <laughs> okay, moving on. Layout. So this is all about displaying your dashboard or the contents of your dashboard in a logical order that makes uh, sense to the user. And typically we want to arrange things by importance. So uh, users usually consume the dashboard um, left to right, top to bottom. So you want to put your important piece of information on the top left and move towards uh, sort of less um, I guess, important information towards the bottom right. Okay, so this is a before. You can see it's, uh, you know, some of the, the different charts aren't sized correctly. The position may not be ideal. Um, so we need to address that. How, how can we better lay this out? So this is the after. So there's some subtle changes. Um, the bubble chart's been moved up to the top because that's the most important information uh, we want to convey. It's been stretched out. So the actual bubbles aren't uh, squashed. The maps have been resized properly, you know, removing that white space. Um, and the finally, the, the trend chart on the bottom um, has been stretched out, so uh, we can see it a bit more clearly. So really, just simple changes in the layout will improve the, I guess, the usability of the dashboard. Number seven, clarity. But make it easy for people to understand. So. This uh, chart, for instance, um, there's no clear labels on here. There's no title. Um, you know, I can see some uh, some sort of metrics on my y-axis there. I can see some dates, but it's not telling me what it's about. I don't know what this data represents. So we do some symbol things to address that. Firstly, put a title on there. Now I know it's actually invoiced amount. Um, I've changed the y-axis label, so I put a dollar amount in there. I've also put um, clearer labeling on my uh, x-axis there to show me it's a you know a, a period type data so basically changing um, invoice amount over, over period so a lot clearer um, without making huge changes to the the chart just improves the uh, readability something else you might want to add is instructional text so this is useful when the dashboard isn't being used frequently by particular users. So you can imagine if somebody logs in every month to look at a performance dashboard, um, they may not have context behind it. So it's useful to put some instructional text, so essentially help text on how to use the dashboard and maybe um, what some of the metrics mean on there. We can also use um, conditional formatting to highlight importance of different metrics. For instance, we can use both color and size. Um, you can see that uh, percentage of maximum there actually shows the uh, magnitude of the invoiced amount through both uh, size of the bars in there, as well as color. We can also use red, amber, green um, coloring for profit. Also shows some sort of change over time by the arrows, up and down arrows, etc. Um, so various means of using some um, visual sort of cues to uh, highlight importance in your data. Moving on, you also want to be able to add context. So this is all about using annotations in your data. So we've got uh, a couple of elements here. We've got a target line to show you some sort of um, target that you want to achieve, some sort of performance management around there. We also show you um, annotations to highlight particular areas in the data, especially if you're sharing it amongst a team, you uh, can sort of zone in or zoom in on a particular area to highlight uh, some context in, in, in the information you're trying to show. Number eight, consistency. So this is all about making sure the terms you use in your dashboards are consistent. So invoice amount, sales, revenue, make sure you're each chart that is actually um, using that type of information uses consistent terms. 
You also want to make sure your calculations and what you call them are consistent. So profit margin um, has been agreed to uh, across the business and uh, you're always using that particular calculation and calling it gross profit margin percentage. But it just make it consistent. So when anybody sees that, they know exactly what it means. You can also use colors to uh, signify the type of uh, dimension or metric it is. So for instance, you might have cost in red and you know, revenue in green, something like that. So consistency across all your metrics and um, dimensions. Number nine, trust. So this is um, giving users the ability to feedback inconsistencies in data and potentially the impact of data quality issues. Um, so what this does is basically um, provides that feedback loop. So if I identify something in the data that may not be correct, it could be through to um, you know, data quality or, or lack of data, for instance, it lets me uh, feed that back to my data steward, whoever's preparing the data to um, improve the quality and you know, eventually trust and engagement of the, of the dashboard. Number 10, sharing. So once you've created a dashboard, you need to be able to use it to um, operationalize some of those insights and to deliver it to the rest of the business. So you might be able to do this through exporting, ex export it to um, via email or PDF or Excel, for instance. You could also broadcast it, so create periodical broadcasts to um, send information out to, to management. This is sort of a management by exception type function. Um, we can also provide a PowerPoint type of functionality where you want to basically surface all your charts, and your dashboards in a um, PowerPoint or board report type function, again, to, to share it. Um, and finally, timeline functionality. So this is similar to what you'd have in a Facebook timeline or you know, a workflow um, where you want to basically uh, highlight particular elements through comments, for instance, and share it amongst the organisation. Okay, so they're the top 10. Um, I guess key takeaways about this, uh, about the top 10 um, best practices, is you want to create um, trustworthy engaging dashboards that people want to use. So um, for anything, any key takeaways out of there, that's basically the top, excuse me, the top 10 um, best practice uh, tips, I guess. Well, that was really great. It's so insightful as well. And it's actually very interesting when you actually think about all these little pieces that make up a dashboard and how you can sometimes get carried away creating something that at the end of the day, it's not the purpose of the dashboard and things like that. You know, we've both had experience countless times where you've been doing some work for clients and they think they get caught up in something completely different and at the end it doesn't answer the question they need to answer. Yeah, that's exactly so right. So purpose is probably my most, you know, it's such a standout for me. Yeah. And making sure that it's relevant and everything. Yep. Okay, so I've been keeping an eye on the questions flooding through, guys. Really good to see everyone is so interested in what we're talking about. Um, so I'm just going to pick a couple, but we will certainly try to get back to anyone whose questions I don't answer. We'll follow up. Um, okay, so I've just got one here from Sally. Now, she said, um, if we're using drill down, or when do we use drill down, sorry, rather than a drill through report? Uh, that's a good question. So there's various ways of getting to uh, more detailed information from a summarised dashboard. One of the topics I had on the best practices was about uh, a summary or summary level um, information. So you can either drill through to a you know a child report that's got more detail for a particular metric, um, or you can drill down, which is basically drilling in place without opening a different window or going to another chart. They provide um, similar functionality, but um, one is probably more detailed. The drill through one will give you a little bit more detail um, and add a few columns to your, yeah, your data. Um, okay, we've got another one here from a Rob, actually, different Rob, though. Um, regarding collaboration, they just asked, um, you know, with all the commenting and different features that are available in the timeline, like how can we use these on a dashboard or can we use these on a dashboard? Yes, so you can comment on dashboards and there's a number of ways to do that. Um, you can actually take a screenshot of your, your data, for instance, um, on the dashboard, highlight it, add some comments and share that or you can actually provide a link to that particular chart on the dashboard as well. There's a number of ways to 
um, collaborate and share and comment on information. And I really find that helps close the gap as well. You think about who the audience is of your dashboards and the fact that, you know, where they're busy, you need a quick, easy way for them to be able to communicate with the analyst or whoever is building the reports for them. To be able to go, I don't trust this data or yep. perhaps this report's yep. not up to date or whatever they need, like whatever feedback they need to provide. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. definitely important to be able to incorporate that into your dashboards. All right, let's just go one more here. Now, I've got one from Katie. Can you have a single dashboard for multiple levels in an organisation? That's a great question. Um, so one of the, I guess, best practices is to focus that dashboard to make sure it suits your user. So ideally, you want a dashboard that um, covers a single level in the organisation or, or, or a single line of business. You want to avoid having a dashboard that tries to cater for too many parts of the business at too many different levels. Um, the risk there is you're going to you know, make everybody unhappy rather than um, satisfy all their needs. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we will follow up on any of those other questions, guys. But for now, I think that's it for our webinar. So if, we, um, if you'd like to know more about some of the dashboard best practices that we provided today, um, there is actually a guide available on our website. I'll actually just swap over to uh, this other tab and just show you where. Um, actually, you probably can't see my URL bar, but yellowfoonbi.com slash campaign slash dashboard best practices. If you just do a Google search and go yellowfoon best practices guide, you'll find it. Um, but basically you can sign up and also get a copy of that guide, which is really useful. Thank you everyone for taking time out of your day. Tune in next month for the next webinar. Bye. Bye.